restart the recording because this is going to be the VOD for uh, the YouTube channel. And like I just mentioned, if uh, you miss any of this, you can watch it on my Sumo YouTube channel, which uh, if you're watching this on the Sumo YouTube channel, you can watch this live on twitch.tv slash Leo Dickinson, where I will be covering the entire Basho. And it looks like the Sumo database is down, which really sucks. Because apparently it's been down all day. They're probably moving servers. So let's see. Let's see if we can pull up the Todi Kumi from someone else. Uh, Cause I just want to be able to see who is facing who every single day. Uh, this is day 10 for some reason. Let's see. This is November, 2020. What the hell is going on here? Uh, this is a little scuffed already. Fantasy Basho, why? Tachii.org. It's because the friggin' sumo database is down. I guess we'll just go into every single obby match blind on who he's uh, facing, and I won't have any context for any of his matches or results or anything. All right, here we go. I'll use the official website. All right, so day one. We have Abi going up against Takara Fuji. And, you know, this is Tale as Old as Time matchup. We have Yotsu versus Oshizuma. And usually the uh, Oshizumo guy just has to keep the opponent away from his belt. And if he does that for long enough, then he usually snags the win. And Takara Fuji is the definition of consistent Yotsu battling. Uh, where is my epic pen? So, like we uh, mentioned in the previous tournament's VOD about Abi, we kind of know how he always wants to attack, as is his usual style. He goes really high, attacks the face, attack the throat, and Takata Fuji usually can't stand up to that kind of frontal assault. So, the question here is pretty much, can Takata Fuji really do anything about Abi's attack? Because, uh, as we know, before Abi fell due to suspension, Abi was... Uh, ranked above Takata Fuji pretty consistently for, you know, about a year. And it's just a matter of, you know, can he do it again, basically? Can he uh, just continue to fight off this old veteran? Now we'll watch it at full speed. Takata Fuji versus Abi. Abi going straight for the throat, like I said, charging forward, putting his head into the attack, and not letting Takata Fuji even mount a defense. So just a really solid and fast win from uh, Abby right there. You're an hour late to work. You got caught up in the Fuda dimension. That's really unfortunate. But I'm glad you're here now, Mitsuno. Joke's on you. We only just started. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like you said, poetic line. He just gets a really good opening attack. A really fantastic Tachi eye. Straight from the get-go. Both hands straight to the throat. What are you going to do about this? Both hands straight to the throat. He was down on the ground, and then he pulls up and goes, BAM! Right to the face. He knew exactly how he wanted to attack, and he goes for it. And it's just a matter of continuing to do those arm windmills that I like to talk about. He thrusts, he pulls back, and then he thrusts again. He pulls back, and he thrusts again. Pulls back and thrusts again, and I hope this obnoxious yellow is really tearing out your eyeballs. We could switch to blue, maybe. How does that look? But, uh, yeah. You're gonna see his left arm pulls back and attacks again, his right arm pulls back and attacks again, and he just does that over and over again. He even adds his head to the charges, like right here. He pushes forward head first, because he knows he has a really good grip on the throat right here. Again, really good push on the throat. Takara Fuji needs to play defense the entire way through, but Abi just lays into the attack. He knows that Takara Fuji's defense is going to be him trying to stand stalwart and not really try to step to the side. So Abi knows he can attack viciously, leaning into it. And we really get to see how hard his assault is just straight from day one. 
You can see he's squatting down. He's coiling himself up like a serpent ready to strike. And bam, goes for another strong charge. Hand to the face. This left arm coming out a little wild, but we know that's exactly going to go back up into the face. Whereas his other hand, this is the position where I think Takata Fuji might have the opportunity. Because he has his arm inside here and could try to push Abi to the side. And we see Abi's hand up to the right is slipping. So if Takara Fuji pulls back here and pushes forward here, he could simply knock Abi to the side. But Abi, smarter than that, he's going to plant his foot right down here. He's going to plant his foot. His toe is already pointing this way. He's going to swing the rest of his body around and continue to charge forward, keeping himself square. You can see, plants the foot, brings the other foot around, plants that, and then recharges. Bam! Head straight to the chest again, and Takara Fuji can't even keep up with it. Oh, Takara Fuji getting pushed back, pushed back. He's trying to dance around the edge, but Abi keeps doing this thing where he steps forward, and he's not taking those big risky steps either that we uh, like to talk about. Where uh, he's taking smaller steps so that he doesn't really overcommit to a push. Like right there, we kind of saw it. Where his foot went from over here to over here. And he nearly overextended himself because, you know, that's a... Even though it doesn't look like a very long distance here. A step bigger than your usual, like the shuffling that I talked about with Mitakeyumi. Where he shuffles forward instead of taking steps forward. That's a little risky because you don't want to lose your footing for too long. But Abi here, he pivots on those feet really quickly. Like, he's just really fast on these feet. And that allows him to kind of be reckless with these attacks. Because if he's fast on the attack, his opponent would need to be faster on the defense. And Takara Fuji is simply not that kind of person. Now, if he's going up against someone like Ho Shoryu or someone smaller like that, where they are faster on the defense, that's where he's going to want to try, to try to shift his style. But... In this particular matchup, Abi was just the perfect counter to Takara Fuji. Day two, we come into it, and uh, he goes up against Chio Shoma, the Henka specialist. Let's see, that's a little too high on the Banzuke. Takara Fuji versus Ho Shoryu, and then it is right after this that we see Abi. Abi versus Chiyoshoma. Everybody knows Chiyoshoma as a Henka man, but he actually does perform some very balanced and very good sumo when he feels like it. Hmm. So, the question here is, how is Chiyoshoma going to attack? Like, we know how Abi is going to attack. The real question is, how is Chiyoshoma going to attack? And how is Abi going to respond to it? So immediately, we kind of can't see it because Abema is notorious for awful camera angles. But uh, Chiyoshoma goes for a slap to the face and then we'll watch it full speed. Chiyoshoma, right hand up, slap to the face. And it was uh, the mistake to make, honestly. Because uh, you have to figure, when you reach up to slap your opponent in the face, you expose the chest. And that's exactly what happens here. Chiyoshoma, his arm is outside, and that allows Abi to get both of his hands. I need to be more consistent on these colors. Chiyoshoma's arms are outside because he went for a slap to the face and then trying to grab, whereas Abi's arms, they're exactly where they want to be. They're both bent inside going straight for the throat. So he just naturally gets a really good push. He loses... He slips a little bit on the right hand, but he has Chiyoshoma, you know, at a distance. He's basically choking him right here. And this is where Chiyoshoma, it looks like he leans back to try to go for a pull, which is definitely not the bad choice here. Like, you can see hand wrapped around Abi's arm, and he's leaning way back to try to pull around this way. But Abi, we can see his footing again. Footing, not very stable, but he's going to pull this foot around. And uh, hopefully recenter himself, which is exactly what he does, but he's tripping forward in the process. And that's exactly what I was talking about in the last match. When these steps are too big, you tend to lose your footing. And so here, Abi is 100, I mean, he's lost his footing, but Chiyoshoma is there to catch him, unfortunately. 
and to catch him he does because it allows Abi to kind of like ram into him stop his momentum and then regain that footing that he had just lost against a pretty good pull from Chiyoshoma and then it's as simple as not getting pulled out of the ring as he pushes Chiyoshoma out so we can watch his full speed again Chiyoshoma I think he had a really good idea in trying to pull Abi but he didn't pull Abi enough to the side and kind of pulled Abi into himself instead and that just kind of gave gave uh, Abi everything he wanted even though it didn't look pretty and uh, it didn't look very well executed I mean that's how Abi gets most of his wins anyway so not a terrible day for Abi on day two day three his opponent is going to be Toby Zaru Ah, oh, look, we skipped right to it. Well, being Maigashita 6, we can kind of rely on all of his matches to be, like, near the top of the hour. In the second half of the night. So, uh, Tobizaru, he's usually wild and unpredictable. So you kind of have to ask the question, how will Abi... Oops. How will Abi deal... With uh, a mostly unpredictable Tobi Zaru, and what will Tobi Zaru do to try to counter the attack? Here we see Kakuryu in the right hand corner over that way. He just blasted Tochinoshi in back. Huh? This is not a matchup I think we've seen before. And if we have, it was probably uh, at the last tournament, which I can't pull up right now because Sumo Database is down. But, uh,. Like I said, Toby Zaru versus Abi. We know how Abi is going to attack. And the th I've mentioned this before. The thing I like about Toby Zaru is the fact that he adjusts his style to try to counter his opponent. So my prediction coming into this match would be Toby Zaru is either going to go for a leg pick or go for an arm pull. Because that's where Abi's weak points are. We kind of saw it against Chiyoshoma that Abi... Ku is very vulnerable to the pulls, and so Tobizaru might try to build on that, but we'll see in this match. It's been a pretty Tobizaru actually pushes forward and goes for, you know, he goes for that uh, Oshizumo battle, but he just kind of slips on the salt, I guess. Like, what happens here? We can watch it at full speed again. It looks like his right knee buckles. And I don't know why. Honestly. Like, we can watch it again full speed. I'm kind of confused as to what happens here. Okay. I think I see what happens here. Abi has a hand, like, right on Toby Zato's ear. So what probably had like we were watching at full speed. They're just slapping the crap out of each other, but Abi is slapping his head. Abi gets the hand right to the ear. So he probably stunned Toby Zato at the same time. Toby Zato his footing, like his knee, you can see it kind of buckling inside like that. So my guess here is that uh when Toby Zato, you know, goes for this Oshizumo match, Abi, being better at it because that's his style, just lands a really nice slap to the head, stuns Toby Zaru, and, you know, just makes him tumble to the ground. Like, if we watch this at full speed, that's exactly what it looks like. He just gets one really good shot to the head, and then Toby Zaru goes down. Because it's not like Toby Zaru's footing looked bad. Maybe they were too, like, in line with each other, but... I'm looking at Abi's hands, and maybe not. Like, maybe he doesn't even get a good shot. Maybe he just actually just buckles. Yeah, because it looks like Abi's hand slides off the back of his head like he didn't even make good contact. If anything, though, uh, you could call this pretty decent from Abi at least like in the very short amount of time that they were fighting each other and 
let me just check real quick is there any way to slow down this playback i don't know what deinterlacing is and no i guess not video effects image adjust no film grain no okay i guess i can't slow down playback here but uh I mean, just looking at uh, how Abi kind of handles himself here, he's taking a more defensive approach to Toby Zotto's attack. Like, he takes a step back, and usually he is not the one to do that. He's usually stepping forward. So the fact that he's stepping back, I think he's giving Toby Zotto respect because he doesn't know how Toby Zotto is going to fight. So he's defending himself from anything tricky by taking that step back. And then Toby Zotto tries to bring himself low to get underneath that might have been it toby zadu ducked low and then i think just buckled on his own weight because i paused that like almost at the perfect time he tries to go low to go underneath abby's hands and then just keeps going down like you can see it right here this is where he starts to duck and you can see that right knee his right knee, like, just bends underneath him, and then he kicks it out. So I have to imagine that he, like, tweaked his knee wrong there, and that's why he buckled. Because I really don't see Abby, like, you can see again, Abby's hand slides off the back of his head. I think this is more of a Toby Zadu loss than anything else. So, you know, W in the win column for Abby, but not too much to say about it. Most of this was just trying to decipher what the hell happened to Toby Zadu. <laughs> Moving on to day four. You know, if anyone else has any theories in the YouTube comments or on Reddit, because I plan on posting this to Reddit, feel free to yell at me. But uh, to me, it looked like Toby Zadu just kind of fell over trying to dodge an attack. All right, here we go. Uh, that is Onosho Hoshoryu. That is one match too late. Because the Abby match is before that. Is that during commercials? No, it is not. Chiono Kuni, uh, who bowed out of the tournament due to injury and I think finished, what, 0 and 15? Let me just double check that. But Chiono Kuni had an awful tournament this time around. Uh, no, he ended up getting four wins in the last few days. Yeah, he ended 4 and 11. But damn, if he didn't look terrible this tournament. Uh, how is he going to fight against Abby here? And this was the night that I had like a terribly sore throat for like no reason. Yeah, I love talking. I love like um working in the I had guest commentators, Leaf brother and Safari guy. All right, so Abi versus uh Chiono Kuni. I'll be honest, Chiono Kuni is not someone I really pay attention to on top of the fact that he has only looked terrible recently. So, can't really tell you what kind of style he goes for, but uh it's certainly not a winning one. You want to visit one like funny rock man? I'll give you funny rock man. All right. And we're getting into it. Chiono Kuni and Abi. Abi going for the charge straight for the throat as he always does, and Chiono Kuni nearly gets the pull out, but accidentally steps out himself. So, once again, Abi going for his tried and true attack, both hands up on the shoulders, like we mentioned at the last tournament. This is the way he does it. Keeps his opponent at arm's length immediately, even if he has to step a little bit back at the Tachi Eye, and then pops him up. And we can kind of, I kind of hate how Abi does this, because it looks like it would be so easy to slip. He only has his toes on the fucking clay. Like, that's nasty. He only has his toes on the clay while he's going for the push. Like, I don't know how much leverage that actually provides you. But I guess it does give him some distance because, you know, if his heel were on the ground, he would have a little less height, which I guess that's the what he's going for here. But either way, he's getting up on his tippy toes while he goes for this, these pushes and Chiono Kuni 
can't handle it, needs to retreat, and Abi with a really nice re-attack at the throat. You could see he kind of gingerly approached and then went BAM, both hands up to the neck. And that's the kind of careful and tactical approach that I think he needs to implement more in his style of sumo. Because uh, we can, I wish I could go back by only like two seconds, but uh, we can take that step back and we can kind of see after they uh, disengage Abi, like right here, he was really careful with those hands. He just kept them out in front and then bam, right up to the throat because he knew he needed to be on point with his attack. He cannot let himself, you know, slip to the side or get pulled out, which is almost exactly what happens here. We can see again, similar to what happened on day uh, two against Chiono, uh, you know, the other Chio. They're all in the same stable, by the way. He goes for the attack to the face. And Chiono Kuni wraps both arms around that and tries to go for the pull. But as he does that, you can see that right heel, bop, out of the ring. So, error on Chiono Kuni's part. But we can even see, like, Abi was ready for that attack. He has this foot turned going towards Chiono Kuni just to, like, even shoulder charge him. But he's actually, uh, you know, pulling back that shoulder so he can recenter himself and continue the attack. But Chiono Kuni's foot already out. Abi has no need to continue the assault. And just a really well-balanced attack from Abi, I think, in this match. Just really well done. Unfortunate for Chiono Kuni that he accidentally stepped back out of the ring. But that was a really strong push. Like, he was not given too much room to work with. Day five, we have Abi versus Hokuto Fuji, and Hokuto Fuji made my guess the Banzuke very sad. I knew I should have bet on Ono Show, but that is neither here nor there because I would have lost anyway. Because I picked Terano Fuji. Or no, Terano Fuji was the top guy in that division. I picked uh, not Mitake Yumi. <laughs> I have a feeling a lot of people are going to pick me Takeyumi for their next Kachi Clash. And that's something we will cover on day zero, on the day before the uh, tournament starts in March. That is going to be happening uh, March 11th, Central Standard Time, day zero of the Hatsubasho. Let's see, Abi versus Hokuto Fuji. Both of these guys are uh, more Oshizumo types, but uh, Hokuto Fuji usually charges with his head as well as his arms. Uh, and then, of course, we know about Hokuto Fuji's ballet moves at the edge of the ring to save himself many times. Abi, how can he handle the cannonball that is Hokuto Fuji? Will his hands be able to stop that charge? Abi? Goes straight for the face and does indeed stop the charge, going, you know, very good attack at the chest, at the shoulders. A lot of missed thrusts, I feel, but it was good enough to get the win against Hokuto Fuji, who did struggle at this tournament. So Abi here, we can see right off the Tachi eye, again, right hand straight to the throat, that left hand, I think that left hand is actually blocking Hokuto Fuji's right while Hokuto Fuji tries to use the left to go for the belt. But while Hokuto Fuji is doing this, Abi has his arm bent in, and he's going right for the push back to the face. Actually pulls his hip back and away, so he can create the distance instead of going for the push, and in doing so, Hokuto Fuji has to break that grip, and now Hokuto Fuji, who doesn't have the Oshi attack and failed the Yotsu attack, now he's on the back foot. And now he has to try to fight against an Abi that has both hands inside and both of these pistons going straight for the face. So how does Hokuto Fuji try to respond? He tries to rock Abi to the side, which is not bad, but Abi, it you can kind of see his oops. You can kind of see his footing is uh oh, I could have skipped ahead. His footing is not bad. Like his feet are turned outside, so he can keep that stability and not get rocked back and forth. So in all of Hokuto Fuji's attempts to, you know, push him to the side like he is right here, you can see this arm trying to get Abi to the side, which he almost does. 
that stance is so wide that that only really turns his upper body, which he knows how to, you know, pull that shoulder back and attack with the other shoulder, which we're going to see in just a second. He pulls the shoulder back. He keeps the hand up so he can get the hand to the face on Hokuto Fuji. And he just pushes forward with the left. So he knows how to rock those shoulders so he can keep the attack going. And that's where most of that attack comes from, the leverage of the hands in the shoulders. And uh, that's kind of really where most of the force comes from. You wouldn't think, you know, uh, I have very basic martial arts knowledge. And one of the first things they teach you is like, you know, it's not about the force with your fist. It's about putting your entire body into the punch or in this case, the thrust, and it starts up in the shoulders, in the chest, you know? He's rocking those back and forth. He's not doing this with his elbows and with his arms. He's rocking these shoulders back and forth and back and forth, and that's how he keeps himself stable. He gets into his own rhythm, where now Hokuto Fuji tries to slap him to the side, but he's just rocking this back so he can attack with the other hand. That's what I thought, too. Uh, I don't actually know how many sumo wrestlers swim, but uh, that could, I mean, any kind of workout regime would be really helpful, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, from here, Abi, whoops, <laughs> I was a little ugly looking, pushes out with both of those arms. And again, another situation here where uh, he nearly finds himself flying out of the ring, but he uses the Tawada you know, as that stepping stone to turn his body, like you can see him leaning off of this Tawada, like really digging into it so he can attack right off of it, you know? So really good follow-up afterwards, really just great and solid attacks from Abi. And, you know, love him or hate him, he has really good sumo. <laughs> Day six, we see Abi going head to head against Shimano Umi, who he's another guy that I don't really pay attention to because he's not incredibly notable. But uh, I mean, it's not like he's a bad sumo wrestler considering he stays up at the top for so long. Hmm. I was just thinking about uh, what I was saying about. Abi moving with the shoulders. This is a bit of a tangent, but uh, it's like, you know how you can breathe through your nose, but you want to breathe with your chest? Like, like, you know what I mean? It's like using different parts of the body to achieve the same function to make it easier on other parts of your body. It's kind of the idea of what I was talking about. <laughs> Like when you walk, you lift your knees to make it easier on your feet because you don't walk with your feet. You walk with your legs. <laughs> now I might be getting a little off point, but you, you got what I'm saying, right? Anyway, Shimano Umi versus Abi coming in here. So I'm not weird for thinking that, right? <laughs> Abi getting good hands to the shoulders as per usual, and Shimano Umi actually keeping him at bay. And this is a rare opportunity to see Abi go on the defensive and go for the pull himself. It's a really solid from Shimano Umi to withstand that initial assault. And let's see how uh, Abi does it here. Again, usual hands to the shoulders, hands to the face. Shimano Umi's defense here, he gets his hands inside. And that's the important thing. All of Abi's opponents up till this point, the only time they got their hand inside was when they were trying to pull on the one arm. But this time, Shimano Umi's defense has both of the hands inside of Abi's, as you can see right here. So now Abi has to resort to slapping the outside of the head. And you can see Shimano Umi even throws the elbow up to protect against Abi's assault. He doesn't want Abi to get these hands inside. He keeps the hands outside. So now Abi finds himself in a position where he can't get the attack he wants because Shimano Umi, again, like even though Shimano Umi has his hands low, they're still blocking the attack from Abi. Hand inside, gripping the armpit. And now Shimano Umi is trying to pull Abi in, trying to like 
stabilize Abby, get him under control. Can I help you? What's up? Uh, these are they going into a deck or are they? Uh, no, these are bulkish okay. stuff. That's mm -hmm. why I put them to the side because I'm not putting them in a binder. Okay, well I'm putting them in. Yeah, put them in the bulk. <laughs> Anyway, Shimano Umi really trying to keep Abi in his own arm's reach so he can control Abi here. And by gripping underneath the armpit and pulling Abi down, now Abi is on the back foot. He's the one struggling. You can see he even has that foot all the way back to try to stop himself from sliding against Shimano Umi's push, give himself a little bit more leverage in these legs so he can keep pumping them again. But instead of going forward, he decides to go backwards. He sees the opportunity now where Shimano Umi, hands inside, he's going to grab the hand and go for the pull. He leaps backwards, both hands on the wrist, and Shimano Umi, now he's being dragged. So we can see, like, the distance covered all the way back here. Shimano Umi now being pulled this way. That's a lot of force that uh, now Shimano Umi has to stop his own frontal momentum. Upper chest. And he cannot because Abi leaps back again, bounces off the Tawada, steps to the side, even lifts up that right foot. You kind of can't see it through the chat. Lifts up the right foot and just leads Shimano Umi out of the ring. He even had the hand on the back of the head to throw him down if necessary. But Shimano Umi steps out and Abi, showing really respectful sumo, does not make him go tumbling out of the ring. And uh, Abi... Doing really, really well for himself. Like, we can watch that at full speed again. Shimano Umi does a really good job of keeping his own hands inside, blocking the attack, and then Abi going for a very smart move. Just look at the distance Abi is going to cover here, too, when he starts moving backwards. And the fucking artifacting got in the way, so you couldn't even see it. But, uh, I mean, we can definitely watch this again. Abi hopping back, hopping back, hopping to the side. And like I mentioned earlier, the hopping is risky because you can throw yourself off balance. Like you can lose your footing. You can lose, you know, you can slip at a moment's notice. But Abi keeping those frog legs nice and balanced managed to get the pull backwards, which was uh, unexpected, I can imagine, from Shimano Umi's end because I... I mean, up until this point, Abi has only ever tried to go forward. So to see him go backwards here, pretty, pretty smart move, I would have to say. Let's see. Up next, we have Abi versus... Where are you, Abi? The hell did he fight? Abi versus Onosho. And this is actually where his first loss is going to come from. That's the same problem that matter against each other. The Ono Show also, uh, he is another uh, Oshizumo guy who's similar to Hulk to Fuji in that he tries to throw his whole body into it. Uh, but he's kind of infamous for his inconsistency in this position of the uh, the Makuchi Joy. Like, he'll go 10 and 5 for Maegashita 5, and the next tournament, if he gets Komusubi, he's going 5 and 10. He is not going to get anywhere near a winning record next tournament. Let's be real. Hmm. So, Abi, going up against a man just as young as him, just as powerful as him, has a little more uh, weight in his belly, but I'm pretty sure Abi has a little more height with those long legs. Back from the third division. Abby, let's see how he does here. Previous control and Abby. Abby getting hands to the face. Ono Show trying to fight it off, but Ono Show going for the pull and slapping him down to the side. And, you know, I knew it was going to come back to bite him at some point. It happened on day two. It happened a few days after that, and it was only a matter of time until someone finally was able to send Abi flying to the side. Here again, I think Abi has the advantage right here. He has both hands to the face, both hands inside, but you can see Onosho trying to like flip his arms up to fight off the attack. And you can see he goes underneath Abi's arm to push it up and away from him. Abi 
goes a little more inside to try to avoid that and gets a really nice push to the face, but this is where he gets overambitious again. He knows he has a good push, and he tries to take advantage of it as much as he can, and that lends himself to overextending his attacks. He pushes forward. It was a, That was one small balanced push. I like that. That was a good small push. But then here, takes too big of a step. Like I said with the Mitake Yumi video, when you take too big of a step, you stumble. And this time he does stumble. He gets a good attack to Onosho's face, but Onosho is pulling up and away while he's getting pushed back anyway. So all he has to do is use the momentum that is being granted to him to retreat and slap Abi to the side, which you can see he gets a really nice hand to the back of the shoulder right here. And while Abi tries to, uh, I don't know if he's trying to regain his footing or not, but, uh, I think at this point it is of no return, and he just falls flat on his face. Yep. Ono show, putting up a good enough defense, I think. But uh, again, I think Abi has the advantage off the Tachi Eye here, and he really only falls to his own momentum. It's like Abi, full control, full advantage, but then it's right here. Then it's right here. Ono show slaps his hands down. Because that just lets him go, Because uh, and this is something I talk about uh, a decent amount too. When Abi is leaning so far forward, all you need to do is get out of his way and let him fall down. And that always happens because, you know, when you get pushed back to the Tawada, you lean up and back, and then usually the opponent will either try to finish you off by pushing you back or just letting you fall down to the ground because you're pushing yourself forward. And that's kind of exactly what's happening here with Abi. Abi is pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward. Onosho just says, all right, you're already leaning this far forward. All of your momentum is going this way. Let's just help you out a bit and go down. So Onosho gets the slap down on the arm, gets the slap on the back here, and just has, you know, a really good sidestep. So despite the fact that Abi, I think, won the Tachi Ai, it's just a matter of he needs to let, not let his opponents take advantage of his not very good positioning. Like, because we see it all the time, Abi leans so far forward in his attack, he's up on his tippy toes, attacking the entire way. And we already saw it twice this tournament. Chiyoshoma and, uh... Chiono Kuni, both going for poles that didn't work. Third time's the charm for Onosho, and Onosho gets the pole. At this point, Abi could have been, you know, four and three, and that would have been reasonable. But instead, he is six and one, and he is going into his match against Hou Shoryu, where he suffers a second loss in a row via Yori Kiri. Oh, Shoryu, the nephew, versus Abi, the prodigal son of Sumo. Oh, <laughs> Shoryu is no slouch, too. He is tall. Oh, and that's exactly what Abi doesn't want to have happen to him. Right off the bat, he gets the hand inside. And thank you for the follow. XIX sides. Whole show to you immediately. Right hand on the belt gets Abi out of the ring. Abi, I think, decidedly loses the Tachi Ai here because he does what he usually does. He tries to get both hands up inside to the face. But look at what Whole Show to you does here. Instead of taking the Tachi Ai straight on, he leans. Camera side, he leans to the right, slaps the arms to the left, and then this allows him to get a grip on the belt right here. He already has so much momentum going this way around the body that he just, he doesn't even need Abi to do anything else. He just gets the grip on the belt. And Abi actually did try to retreat from that. He felt himself get slapped to the left, and so he tried to swing his hips around away from where Hol Shodi was going, but Hol Shodi was just way too quick, really locking in that grip on the belt, 
And from here, Abi knew it was done, so he tries to go for a pull down. You can see him, you know, doing the Tochi Noshi and wrap the head around the back of the head. And uh, he does try to get the twist down here, but Hoshoryu, footing too good, gets uh, what is what was listed as a Yori Kiri, even though that looked more like an Oshidashi. But uh, I guess it was because he had a grip on the belt. But yeah, again. Abi getting taken advantage of, and this is exactly what I said earlier about Tobizaru. Tobizaru would win with, you know, by being faster on the defense. And I even used Whole Shoryu as an example. I didn't even remember that Whole Shoryu beat Abi here, but uh, Whole Shoryu faster on the defense than Abi is on the attack. Not even a minute ahead, so I got spoiled on who wins the match. Bam, bam. Just the one two punch. Hand to the side, hand on the belt. Hand on the side, hand on the belt. Too quick for Abi to be able to handle. And if the only way to beat Abi is to be faster than him, then let's be real, he's not going to have a lot of people beating him. <laughs> this is sumo we're talking about. Speed is not exactly uh, the forte when it comes to, you know, footwork. But hey, at the very least, those are the last two times Abi, or no, two of the only times Abi loses his tournament. He uh, comes back into this one and wins against Myon Giryu via Hikiotoshi. This is a little late in the night. That's my bad. Let's see. Oh, anime boys. Here we go, Abi. So Abi versus Myon Giryu. This is a matchup that has happened a lot before. Let's see how Mule Giryu stacks up against Abi. Abi getting pushed way back off the Tachi Eye and then just steps to the side like, uh, you know, people usually do to him. Let's Mule Giryu roll. So I think uh, in this Tachi Eye specifically, Abi gets everything he wants. He gets hands to the shoulders inside. He gets exactly what he wants. But Miyogiryu says, I don't give a shit. I got knocked out by Hakuho. I can push through this. This is baby stuff compared to Hakuho elbow. Miyogiryu just walks right through the attack and starts attacking Abi himself. He doesn't care that Abi has hands to the face. He gets hands on the booba. So Miyogiryu pushing forward Abi... He sees his opportunity now. He has to grab the man by the face and let him roll. So I will say, good defense from Abi. Good, like, good mind to know that he could go for that immediately. Like, I don't know what kind of mental fortitude it takes to be able to know what you can do in any given situation or if they just let instinct take over and you know fight for them because that's what's been ingrained into their sumo bodies for the 10 years that they've been practicing but to know that immediately he can go for this like that's really good i like that a lot Myogiryu doesn't even see it coming and Myogiryu is the veteran in this matchup Abi hands to the face and then slapping the hands down to the side. And we can see it at full speed again. Hands up and then seeing his opportunity, he puts those he puts the forearms down to push down on those arms and that really sends Miyogiryu into the ground. Just quick move, quick move, really good sumo from Abi. Day 10 is what's coming up next. Day 10, he goes up against another veteran in Okinoumi. Isano Sato? Nishono Seki Oyakata? I don't even know what his name is anymore. <laughs> it's so hard to follow sumo wrestler names after retirement. Abi going straight for the face, getting all of the attack that he loves to get, nearly gets pulled like he usually does, but then he goes for the pull. Really interesting stuff right there. That's actually really interesting stuff. I'm not even joking. Like, just from the Tachi eye, again, Abi gets everything he wants. He hands to the face, hands to the throat, both hands inside. Okinoumi with both hands outside trying to grab him. 
And you could see, like, Okinoumi's hands slip off of those arms while Abi tippy-toes getting as much force up into this face as he possibly can. Just tippy-toes, leaning forward, trying to push all the way through him so he can slam him into the ground. Like, he's just trying to push through the man. And this is where Okinoumi, again, knowing that Abi is weak to this move, goes for the pull at the edge here. He has a really good hand underneath uh, the arm here, like you can see. Right underneath the arm, pushing Abi this way, but Abi actually maintains the footing again. Like I said earlier, he keeps those hips really wide. He keeps those that footing really wide as kind of a countermeasure to the pull attempts, which works out really well here. And we can even see Okinoumi's left heel right above the sand there. And even though Okinoumi has a good twist, he can't get Abi out of the ring and immediately Abi foot on the ring and then bam, bounces it backwards. He does not want to be anywhere near the edge of this ring. And now, even though he's on the defense, Okinoumi seeing the attack, charging forward, Abi seeing his opportunity to go for a pole, wraps both of the hands around the arm and then leads Okinoumi out of the ring, getting the hand on the back of the belt for good measure too. Is Tedder no Fuji said if he's sitting out? Uh, I haven't heard anything about Tedder no Fuji, like, at all in this offseason. Uh, I can check the sumo news. Uh, other than, like, updates about COVID, I can't say I've seen anything about Tedder no Fuji. So, no news is good news, in the world of sumo, at least. Yeah, going back to this fight. Really quick, really back and forth. And it's kind of funny that they do go back and forth so quick. Abi in a really good winning position. And then Okinoumi, bam, he's in the winning position. But then Abi with a really good counter attack and a pull. I think uh I think most of that comes down to Okinoumi being sluggish on the counter attack. Because again, if this was a faster opponent, if his opponent was faster, Abi is done for right here. Because this is where you know, he doesn't just try to commit to the push. Oh, oh, my pencil got thinner. He doesn't just try to commit to this little baby push. He charges headlong into the side and into the back. But I think this, is, again, is just Abby's superior speed inside of the ring. Abby recovers, jumps backwards, goes ring around the rosy, leads him out of the ring. So this is another situation where Abby's speed saves the day. And, you know, power to him because he's performing some really good sumo, I think. Up next, we have uh, Abi going up against Ichi no Jo. You would think, how the hell is he supposed to be able to move that mountain of a man? Ichi no Jo is all man meat. That's a Chiyosh. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Abi versus Ichi Nojo. How does Abi's usual attack of going for the face work against a man that looks so immovable? Well, the answer to that is it works anyway because Ichi Nojo also moves backwards. Makes it very difficult for him to be moved. I'm saying that exactly too in uh, the live commentary. Which is kind of funny. Abi and Ichi Nojo. Ichi Nojo actually with a good charge forward. Abi slipping on his footing. Abi in a bad position too. But he manages to step to the side and Ichi Nojo goes tumbling. So let's see that at full speed again. Oh, a little too late. So Abi with a good attack, but Ichi Nojo with a good counter tries to slap to the side and gets a grip around the body of Abi, but Abi literally shakes him off and throws him down. Really good counter attack from Abi there, but I feel like that's a position he shouldn't have let him get into in the first place. Like we can see right here, Ichi Nojo actually gets the inside left. He counters. Or rather, he blocks with a forearm straight to the face of Abi. So already, Ichi Nojo is mounting a smart defense. And then he tries to wrap the arms around Abi to try to give him a bear hug. Like, that's really fast. 
with Ichinojo's arms. You don't usually see him that quick, but now he's trying to go for the wraparound so he can keep Abi in and control him and then try to go for the belt from here because that's what Ichinojo likes to do. But Abi pushes him away, oops, pushes him away, and Ichinojo tries to now slap him down and then catch him again underneath the arm because he wants to grab Abi. He wants to grab Abi underneath the arms, on the belt, around the back, any way he can because then he knows he can control the match. But Abi, stumbling forward here, actually uses that stumble to plant his face into the shoulder of Ichinojo and put his uh, right arm in a kind of awkward position where now it can't really reach for anything because now Abi is locking it with his face. So how does Ichinojo counter this? Well, he tries to maintain a grip on that right arm and now he throws up this left elbow again to counter Abi's attack, slaps the hands down to the side as he retreats and then this is where he resets his feet and you can see Ichinojo is going to stand strong here. Boom! Catches Abi. Huge error from Abi here to even let this happen in the first place. But he catches Abi right underneath the arms, and now he does not want to let go. Ichinojo knows that if he lets go, he's going to go back to an Oshizumo fight, and he does not want that against Abi. So when Abi starts moving backwards to retreat, Ichinojo follows. Ichinojo wants to keep this grip as badly as possible, so Ichinojo steps forward as Abi tries to wiggle away out of it. Unfortunately for Ichinojo, you don't have much grip strength on a hairless back. Like, maybe if this were Kaisei, you could grab some of that rug, but uh, unfortunately for him, Abi has a very smooth back, and you can't really grip it that well. So he loses the grip. And while Abi rocks himself back and forth, like you saw that, he rocks himself. He was wild going back and forth to try to make him lose the grip. Ichinojo loses the grip, stumbles as a result of it, and now it's just all up to, uh, it's just all up to Abi to give him the old razzle-dazzle. Step to the side, slap him down. And again, even at full speed, Ichinojo is really fast with his arms here. He goes inside, outside, trying to grab Abi. Then he goes inside, outside again, trying to grab Abi. And he gets it that next time, right here. But then Abi, using Ichinojo's own strategy against him, really smart defensive sumo, I think. Like, Abi should not have been in that position in the first place, but to know that the, his only out was to retreat and make Ichinojo chase him. Like, that That was really smart. That was really smart. Gets the win off of the back of Ichinojo and moves into day 12 with nine wins. On day 12, his opponent was Takanosho at the very top of the ladder. Fortunate. Uh, excuse me. Abi versus Takanosho. Takanosho, also a Yotsu man. I will say, though, I think Abi is better. And he kind of proves it here because Abi wins this match. <sighs> so, what happens in this match between two Yotsu guys? Here we go. Abi just faster off of the Tachi Eye. Takanosho withstanding the attack, but he takes too big of a step backwards and slips out of the ring. But we can see it again. Abi, I think, is just faster on the Tachi Eye, and even if Takanosho survives there, I think Abi just goes for the follow up and pushes him out with a simple Oshidashi. Like here we can see Abi. Here we go. He simply gets hands to the face faster. He gets his hands where they want to be faster. And even though we know Takanosho likes to go for this, uh, you know, where his left hand is right now, he likes to go for that uh, right hand to the throat, the left hand kind of to the rib cage, and that's kind of what he's doing right now. But that's too slow for the attack against Abi. Like that works against 
you know, a lot of other guys, but not against Abby, because Abby's going to attack your throat and your face and make your entire attack moot. Because it's like I mentioned in the Takanosho video from the previous tournament, he does that because he wants to attack with the right and parry with the left. So he can control the attack in the way he wants to. But he doesn't parry with the left here. Takanosho gets completely shut out from any kind of interaction with Abi because Abi keeps him at that arm's length. You can see the left hand is dangling up here. It, Takanosho's left hand not doing anything over here. Whereas Abi is in, you know, he's doing exactly what he wants to. He does this every single match. Hands to the shoulders, hands to the face, hands to the neck. And then following up with an attack to the chest, right. following up with attacks to that right shoulder, knowing that Takanosho likes to attack with the right hand, he attacks Takanosho's attacking side. So he keeps Takanosho in a state of imbalance where this left hand that's supposed to be defensive is not doing anything, and the right hand that's supposed to be attacking is trying to ward off Abi's attack. Takanosho tries to turn himself so he can, you know, balance himself against the attack, but Abi is just right on top of him the entire way, gets a really good recharge at the very open chest of Takanosho, and Takanosho takes too far of a step back and slips in the sand. So, again, really, really smart sumo from Abi here, attacking his opponent's strong point so he can't use it. And usually you want to attack your opponent's weak point because that's when you can, you know, focus in on, you know, their weak points. Their weak points for a reason. But here he attacks the strong point that Takanosho has. He attacks the right side. Keeps Takanosho at bay while performing really good Supati himself. Really, really smart. Abi is no dumbass except outside of the ring, apparently. <laughs> so now Abi he is going to suffer his final loss of the tournament because he is going up against Mitake Yumi. And we know how Mitake Yumi likes to do it. He does it in a style similar to Ono Show, Okto Fuji, but he does it better. But we can also talk about how Mitake Yumi is more balanced. He does like to go for, you know, the headlong charges, but he also has a belt grip game. He also does Yotsuzumo. And that's why I think I have more confidence in Mitake Yumi than I do Takakesho, but that's a different story entirely. Abi versus Mitake Yumi here. Mitake Yumi, nice big round plump boy. How will he withstand the attack of Abi and counter it himself? Will he simply charge headlong into Abi and make Abi's arms completely useless? This is actually a really, like, defining match of the tournament too, because if Mitake Yumi didn't win here, we could have seen a playoff between Abi and Mita. <laughs> What's up, Ikoma? How are you doing? If you missed any of the analysis, you can be sure to tune into my YouTube channel where I will be posting the VOD, as well as all my other YouTube channels that you should follow right now. And if you're watching on the VOD on YouTube, you can watch these streams live on twitch.tv slash leodickinsonvt. Next week will be the new Bonzuke, but I'm going to be playing Elden Ring, so... <laughs> Here we go, Mitake Yumi versus Abi. Mitake Yumi walking through the attack, trying to with trying to uh, really rein in Abi's hands, and that's kind of what he does there. You can see at one point Mitake Yumi held Abi's hand to try to just simply nullify that attack, and it it worked, I think. I think it worked. You can see it at full speed again here. Abi's usual fast assault really shut down by Mitake Yumi. It's like I was talking about with Mio Giryu, where he just walks through the attack from Abi. The same thing happens here, where Mitake Yumi approaches Abi and just kind of walks through the attack. Like, that right arm to the throat right now is not doing much to Mitake Yumi. And so, in that, Abi tries to, you know, pull that arm back like I say he does all the time. He pulls the arm back, and bam, he wants to go for another attack. 
Unfortunately for him, Mitsakeyumi just counters it because he has that left arm on the shoulder. We can't really see it from this angle, but Mitsakeyumi left arm on the shoulder. So that means all of the momentum that Abi wants to put in with his shoulder gets stopped. And now he's only hitting with the hand. And when you're only hitting with the hand, you know, that's. But if you're hitting with your shoulder, that's like that. So because Mitsakeyumi blocks that, that makes it easier for him to keep approaching. So how does Abi react? He tries to keep pushing through it. And this is where uh, Abi actually grabs the wrist of Mitsakeyumi so he can try to do something. I, I don't know why he does this, actually. I honestly can't tell you why Abi is grabbing Mitsakeyumi's wrist up here. I don't know what purpose that might be serve considering that's kind of really counterintuitive to Abby's attack unless he wants to grab the wrist and then pull it down violently to go for a pull but that's not what he does he just kind of knocks Mitakeyumi to the side and he does gain a bit of positional advantage here but Mitakeyumi immediately plants the foot and blocks with his shoulder he blocks Abby's attack with the shoulder and Abby simply can't move him and then Abi going for a slap down here, Mitakeyumi, and I talked about this in the Mitakeyumi video, he doesn't take very big steps forward. He, sh I mean, and this time he does. Usually he shuffles forward, but uh, Abi trying to go for the slap down here, Mitakeyumi gets his feet underneath him and it simply fails. So I think in this case, this is like the first time this tournament, Abi was completely shut down. Like, everything he tried to do just did not work. And I think this is like, you know, what being a hard counter kind of looks like. Abi threw the brick house at him, and Mitakeyumi just kind of shrugged all of it off. You people with the new games. Listen, man, Elden Ring is like the first game in years that I want to buy day one. Let me have this. Speaking of which, to everyone watching uh, on my Twitch channel, I'll be playing Elden Ring all weekend next weekend because I got myself the day off of work. But yeah, anyway, as in terms of, you know, Abi breakdown here, he tried to do his usual attacks and none of it worked. Like, I don't really think there's much else to say other than his attack was completely ineffective. Just no hope. Nothing doing at all. So now you have to ask the question, if he wants to beat me Takeumi next time, how do you think he's going to do it? Is he going to try to go for a pull? Is he going to try to do his usual attack and hope he keeps me Takeumi off balance enough that he can actually push him backwards? Is he going to go for a slap down like he did here, except me Takeumi might actually stumble? That kind of thing. I don't know how Abi will hope to beat Mitakeyumi if the next time they face each other at the next tournament is going to look just like this. What's up, Dark Nightmare? Welcome to the stream. We're almost done with the sumo portion because we are on day 14 now. And day 14 is the day where Abi faces off against Teruno Fuji in the Musubi no Ichi Ban. I would call it oh, bloodied whole shoryu, I forgot about that. Nah, Mahjong is tomorrow, my man. That's Mahjong Mondays. But yes. Abi needs the win here in order to, uh, you know, get himself into a position to win the tournament. <laughs> Tenor no Fuji needs the win here to stay on top. The last time these two fought each other, Mitakeyumi had Teruno Fuji completely on the ropes before he fell and lost his chance at a Yusho. Mahjong Mondays. Yeah, we have, uh... Mahjong Mondays. We have, uh... Felden Ring Fridays. Uh... Dark Souls Saturdays. <laughs> Likely potential for every day is Taco Day when you have a Mexican wife. Let's be real. 
Teruno Fuji versus Mitake Yumi in the <laughs> female Ichiban. It's a, I was talking uh, aside here for a second, but I was talking about that with someone at work because he mentioned he has a, his, uh, a Mexican wife too. It's like, yeah, I get tacos every morning. And I'm like, you know, if an outsider were listening to this conversation, they would probably think it's racist or something, but it's like, no, legit, get yourself a Mexican girl. She will make you tacos. <laughs> Especially down here in Texas. Anyway, back to the sumo. Tenor no Fuji versus Abi here. <laughs> Abi almost had it just simply doing his own thing in the last tournament, and he probably gets it doing that same thing. Keeping Tenor no Fuji at arm's length, getting him to the side, and this time Tenor no Fuji does not survive the attack. One more time. And Abi earns his gold star. That was a gold star for Abi. So, at the previous tournament, this is exactly... It's kind of played out the same exact way, except at the edge, Abi didn't think he would finish him off and went for a Kataskashi instead of just going for, you know, the final push, getting on his tippy toes and going for that final push. Which, I don't fault him for that, but... It didn't work. So now he opts for what he should have done in the first place. Really good hands inside, as per usual, keeping Teter no Fuji away from his own arms. Because you can even see Teter no Fuji slaps up underneath. He pulls his shoulder up. So he maintains the attack, pulls his shoulder up. So now Teter no Fuji is just tickling his armpit here. Teter no Fuji doesn't really know how to do anything about this attack. He gets a hand inside to Abi's face, but Abi, he still has that hand on Tenor no Fuji's face, the right hand on Tenor no Fuji's face. This left hand onto the shoulder to try to, you know, manipulate Tenor no Fuji's shoulders and keep him at that arm's length. Tenor no Fuji doesn't function well into these Oshizumo wrestlers because he can't grab their belts, he can't grab their arms. Abi does exactly what he does. He does it every time. Bam. Swing it back. Bam. Swing it back. Bam. Swing it back. You know, he just keeps attacking over and over again. Keeping those hands to the face. Pulls back that right arm. But this time, Tenor no Fuji blocks it. So when Tenor no Fuji blocks that right arm with his left, Abi pulls back his entire body and sends Tenor no Fuji to the side. He saw, okay, he blocks my arm. I'm going to pull him now because this is it's uh again that speed that quick thinking the quick thinking i mentioned earlier he knew that tenor no fuji blocked him and so he's not going to be able to follow up on that attack and because the arm for tenor no fuji is in a bad position to block he sees the opportunity to get him off balance and that's exactly what he does now he's going to attack the side which now Tenor no Fuji has his hips turned away from the fight, which is not where you want them. You want them square, but his hips are turned away like this. I need to change color. Hips are turned away, you know, facing this way when you need them to be square and facing your opponent. So now Tenor no Fuji most literally caught off balance. Tenor no Fuji getting pushed back. Pixelation happening all the time. And again, it's just like the last tournament. Abi, hands to the face, hands to the throat. And you can see Tedder no Fuji is trying to grab Abi's, you know, around that right attacking arm. But he just can't. And we can see Abi is manhandling Tedder no Fuji. He has the hand right here up underneath the chin, keeping Tedder no Fuji way off balance. And if you control the head, that controls the shoulders. And when you control the shoulders, you control the arms. And when you control the arms, ah, oh, he can't grab your belt. He can't grab your belt. And that's exactly what Abi wants in this situation. Turns Tedder no Fuji to the side again, and now this is a really bad situation because Abi is behind Tedder no Fuji. Omaiwa. Oh Gets his, the hand on the back of Tedder no Fuji. Tedder no Fuji does almost recover, gets the forearm to the head, but... Abi gets the push out and sends Teruno Fuji flying. 
again, I think I think Abi is probably like top three sumo wrestler right now if he is fighting like this. He's so fast to think about how to counter the counter, like right there. Again, we can watch it at full speed. Teruno Fuji blocks with the left arm. So now Abi, knowing his hand is on the right outside, pushes him to the side, gets him off balance. That is right where he wins the match. Countering the counter is where he wins the match. And we can see the exact moment it happens. Right there. The match is over from here. And against 99% of sumo wrestlers, it will be over from this point. Fuji got the arm up. Abi slapped it to the side. And bam. Following up with a fantastic attack. Abi, 11-3. And coming into the final day against Koto Shoho. We uh, analyzed the match in the Koto Shoho video last week that you can catch on my Sumo YouTube. For those of you watching on YouTube, that is exactly where you're watching. But for those of you on stream, I need you to click on all of those links and follow all of my channels. But again, in this last match, we have uh, Abi versus Kotonowaka, which is what we covered last week. In the Kotonowaka videos. Oh, that's too... Pushing forward again. Uh, I'm skipping around in like weird places. Let's see. Yutaki Yama versus Endo. Abi versus Kotonowaka was much earlier in the night, which is really strange. Now, I will say, I uh, thought. Kotonowaka did really well in this match, and that's, uh, I think, with more experience against this particular opponent, Kotonowaka could possibly beat him in the future. Tenno Fuji's left foot was less than full HP. Yeah, that's true, but, uh, you know, in, in a sport like this, you have to show up all 15 days, and, you know, for Hakuho, his knees would leave early sometimes, or maybe it was his pinky toe. For uh, Teruno Fuji, we don't know when his knees are going to check out of the tournament, but, you know, it happens. Hmm. So, Abi versus Kotonowaka. The stakes for this match were, if Mitake Yumi wins, then whoever wins this match gets involved in a three-way playoff. So there's a lot on the line. And even if Mitake Yumi doesn't win, or... No, if uh, it was if Mitakiyumi loses, there's a three-way playoff. That's my bad. And then if Mitakiyumi wins, you get the Jun Yu show. Both of these guys already had uh, special prizes coming into this. I'd be able to tell you what Abby's was, but uh, the Sumo database is still down, so I can't really. And I'm way too lazy to go looking for it. So, Abby versus Kotonowaka. I wasn't ready for that. So we will watch it at full speed. From Abi's perspective here, and uh, see what he does right and wrong against Kotonowaka. Hands to the face as he usually likes to do, but Kotonowaka fighting him back valiantly. Nearly gets pulled out of the ring as he usually does, fighting back against Kotonowaka's charges. Nearly gets pulled out again. This is actually the most squirrely fight of the tournament, I think. Abi will earn the victory. And that's why in my top 10, it was my number one video. You can check that out on my YouTube. I'm going to keep shilling myself because that's my job. But anyway, this was a really back and forth match. Like, I think anyone could have taken it at any point. And there's a lot of, like, shifts in who's in control and who is not. But I think Abby is in control for most of the match. So if we want to look at here, Abby hands to the face like he normally does. All the time, hands to the face, hands to the throat. Kotonowaka countering it with his own hands to the throat, hands to the face. And he's actually getting some good manhandling in. Like, he gets, you know, Abi to try to counter that left hand. Like, you normally see Abi not trying to parry, but right here we could see Abi getting the hand on the forearm to try to stop Kotonowaka's attack. Kotonowaka 
letting himself get slapped down to the side here, and this is where Abi is a little slow. He doesn't follow up as fast as he might have wanted to, because here we can already see Abi has planted the foot. We saw he just took one little baby step, bam, and then he wants to turn and attack while Colton Awaka is stumbling. So why doesn't he? It's because he hops one more time to reset his feet, which I think is actually really wise. That one little baby hop to reset his feet so he doesn't slip forward on the attack, I think is very wise. Hello, Miku. I hope you're doing well today. Unfortunately for Abi, that gives Colton Awaka enough time to recover just barely enough to survive at the edge here, and Abi has a very good attack right now. Hand to the throat, Colton Awaka on the edge, but he just can't finish him off, and this is where he usually messes up too. Like In trying to throw or push his opponent off, he lets his arm slip forward across the body, and that lets Koto Shoho grab and try to pull. The cane choke slam. One of these days. But here, like I mentioned, Colton Owaka, because Abi has his hand slip off the face in this ditch effort to try to push him off, Colton Owaka, hand right here, parries the attack, pushes back against Abi, and now Abi nearly stumbles forward out of the ring, and we saw this earlier in the tournament, gets one foot on the Tawara, and bam! Bam, right back into the fight. He does not linger on the Tawada because he does not want to be anywhere near the edge of the ring because he doesn't want to accidentally step backwards. And because, you know, even though it would probably be good to get some leverage off the Tawada, he already goes tippy toes as it is. So I don't feel like that would help him much more. Although that's a physics question that I am not prepared to answer. So now Abi has, you know, trying to block Colton Owaka four arms up tries to slap those hands down, and this is where he starts retreating. He starts trying to make space for himself by dancing all the way around the edge of the ring, but Colton Owaka is right on top of him in pursuit, like white on rice. Hello, bear. Goodbye, bear. So, Abi, trying to create some distance, goes on the retreat again, like we saw earlier in this tournament, but Colton Owaka, he's not under any duress. He's not being gripped or anything. Hello, Bubba. How are you doing, Bear? You want to say hi to the camera? No? You just want me to pet you, Bubba? Yeah. <laughs> he timed the Dark Souls parry. Yeah, right? I don't know what's got him so excited. Anyway. Abi goes on the retreat to try to create some distance, but, uh, or in the case of the earlier matches tournament, I already forget which, uh, try to pull down his opponent. And like I said, because Colton Owaka is not under any duress, Colton Owaka is actually on the attack here. Oh my God. Look at him. He has the zoomies right now. What are you doing, Bubba? Are you playing with your mama? <laughs> he only comes to me for belly rubs. But anyway, <laughs> we'll see uh, Abi retreat here. And uh, he can't really gain control of Colton Owaka until he uses the momentum. So he stops himself. And as Colton Owaka is on the pursuit... Colton Owaka overextends and keeps going, and that's what Abi uses to try to get the advantage here. So Colton Owaka, you can see he's still leaning to the left, whereas Abi has already stopped moving, and now Abi is going to be going on the recharge. And he catches Colton Owaka in that like split second of being kind of off balance. And this is where he goes back on the attack, hands to the face. Look at his face right here. Hold on, can I zoom in on this? Cool. Video, zoom, double. Nah, I can't zoom in, damn it. Whatever. <laughs> I wanted to zoom in on that face. But uh, 
you know, Abi goes back on the attack as he usually does, has Colton Awaka reeling. And at this point, it's just a matter of time until Colton Awaka seemingly gets pushed out of the ring. Abi, in his, you know, really rough and wild attack, he gets himself in this awkward situation. Like, what what is he doing? He's like, getting ready to do some dance moves or something. Or getting ready to throw down if someone disses your fly girl. Back in but he manages to recover just in time. I think Colton Owaka has been in this match too long, so he gets a little sluggish there. Tries to catch Abi. Nearly knocks him to the side, but once again, Abi. Foot on the Tawara? Nah, I don't like that. Bam. Off the Tawara, back on the attack. Like when you touch something really gross, it's like, ah, nah, I don't like that. Or if you touch a hot surface, it's like, ah, no, I don't want that. Keep me away from that Tawara. Immediately recenters in the middle of the ring. Nearly gets slapped to the side here, too. And I think at this point, both of these guys are just, you know, they're getting sloppy. It's very obvious they're getting sloppy. They're getting a little wild. They're just, you know, doing their thing. Trying to survive, basically. Yeah, Bubba. <laughs> they're just trying to survive the, each other's attacks. And it's just going to come down to, like... Who loses balance first? What age up with you, Bubba? What the? What? <laughs> he survived at the end. And I'm actually surprised Colton Waka survives here so much, but you can see, like, they're losing strength in their attacks, and they're losing, like, quickness and agility in their attacks, too. So, like, at this point, again, Abi. Has him on the ropes. Probably just gets the kill shot right here. And he goes for another push. And it's just not enough. Because like he even jumped into the attack. And it didn't have enough pushing power to push Colton Awaka back. So at this point, these guys are just really gassed. And want to end the match as fast as possible. Before they get locked into Yotsu. Have to go to water break and do whatever else. And if that's the case, Abi does not want to get locked into Yotsu. So... What happens here is Abi, another attack, goes for the slap down, and Otonawaka stumbles. In what was probably the most exciting match of the tournament, which is again why I put it at number one in my top ten video, which you can find somewhere else on my Sumo YouTube channel. I'll probably make that like the top video when you come in. But uh, yeah, this match was incredibly long, and again, even watching it at full speed, you could see, like, momentum shifts so often, and th just by the end of it, they're just throwing punches, like, you know, like, in Pokemon, the first movie, where they're just, like, beating the crap out of each other with the clones, and at the end of it, they're just like, eh, 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 like, that's kind of what happens in this match. Like, a lot of speed, a lot of excitement between these two young guys. Colton Awaka on the retreat, on the attack, on the retreat. Like, you could even see it in Colton Awaka's footing. He's just, like, really getting lazy, and that's probably what contributes to the loss there. And the fact that Abi is able to stay that wild for that long, like, just stay on the attack like this, this relentlessly, like, that's a great amount of stamina. Probably the most energy he used all tournament, too. This is just a match I could watch over and over again, honestly. But, I mean, I don't think it's an exaggeration, and I did say it earlier, but I think Abi is, like, top three sumo wrestler right now. You can say he's been going up against weaker guys, but in both tournaments, he's had to fight the Yokozuna. 1-1. One, one. The second one was really close. And, I mean, he's just been looking fantastic the big question is and what a lot of people are uh you know debating about obviously with uh, that upcoming guess the bonzuke deadline is is abi going to be a sekiwake and if he becomes sekiwake does he have a chance at an ozeki push i think a no and that means b no and I think they're going to put him at Komusubi to see if he can survive all 15 days at the top of the Banzuke. And if he does, 
Like, if he gets another double-digit win, he's probably going to be a shoe in for Ozeki when he makes it to Sekiwake, which if he gets 10 wins, they would have no choice but to make him a Sekiwake. So, it's really interesting to see right now what's, uh, what's happening in Sumo. With the uh, Abi, you know, really coming back and doing amazing work like this. Collecting that fat stack of cash and really kind of humbling himself too. Like, I I can't translate any of the interviews, obviously, but uh, I mean, I haven't seen in the news that he's doing anything unusual, so I have to assume no news is good news. Hmm. But yeah, that is uh, that is it for the obby breakdown. Uh, I'm gonna be ending the recording right here. But uh, I'll probably continue stream. So for all of those of you watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. You can look forward to some more sumo content because the Banzuke is going to be dropping. And you know I got to do an update about the young guns and uh, talk about all of these guys that are low, young, on the ladder, trying to make their way up to the top division. We're going to have, you know, a new 19-year-old joining us in Judeo. Which, very good for him. We're going to have, uh, you know, exciting guys like Mukai Nakano moving up into that third division. Hopefully getting closer to people like Tsuguro and uh, Keen Bolzan. It's going to be really exciting stuff. So, look forward to that uh, on the Sumo YouTube channel. Uh, if you're interested in more variety content, you can tune into my streams, Leo Dickinson VT on Twitch.tv. Or, you can go to my... Uh, Variety YouTube channel where I post a lot of weird and wacky stuff like anime figure reviews and comedy videos. And if you like gameplay videos, I have my Leo Dickinson Long Plays where I post my VODs from Twitch to YouTube as a little archive. And a lot of the stuff that I didn't originally post to my YouTube channel, I will be updating periodically twice a week, every Monday and Thursday on that channel or was it Tuesday, Friday? It was Tuesday, Friday. Every Tuesday and Friday on that channel. So again, thank you for watching on YouTube. And I hope to see you at the next one.